Hello, welcome back. It's the Clay Golem here with another video. Uh, this is another general uh, general DM tip tool one rather than something specific to Foundry. Uh, somebody made a suggestion about using 5e tools beastery. Oh, beastery, whatever. <laughs> um, for scaling our monsters and things. Uh, you can just Google it. Literally 5e uh, five space tools beastery. And uh, it will take you straight here. Uh, you can also see possibly at the top left here, it's at 5e.tools slash adventure HTML, blah, 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 blah. Because I'm looking specifically at their beastery for Fandelver and below the Shattered Obelisk. So this has got all of those lovely little creatures in it and the little monsters and things that are specific to that module, which is actually really quite handy, isn't it? So when we looked at the 5e stat block importer, well, guess what? If you want this intellect snare, for example, just clicking on this, um, it's here. <laughs> There's the stat block. You can just import it directly from here, which is really, really nice. Uh, and if you want to use their token, it's here as well. Um, so that's lovely. Um, it's just info on the st snare there. There's the image and things. Um, now, I've got mine quite zoomed in. Um, because I wanted to make my screen a bit bigger for you. But as you can see, there's the stat block. You can just copy and paste that whole lot in. So this is a really nice resource we've been able to come. They've got Lano. See, I created Lano in D&D Beyond, but they've got their version of Lano right here. Uh, I'm still sticking with mine um, <laughs> because I've created him now. Uh, and as I mentioned, I like my NPCs to follow the same rules as my players um, so they're on an even footing. And if somebody likes Lano and says, hang on a minute, Lano was amazing, they can replicate it and they can do a good job if, if they want to do that. So looking at all of these things, we can click on any of them. We can use them for stat block importer, which is really, really useful. Um, but we're not here for that. We're here not just to look at these, but for the really, really useful tool. Let's take, uh, who should we pick on? Let's pick on um, oh, anything we like. Let's pick on, oh, they've got the Grail Psychic. Let's pick on the Grail Psychic. Okay, so this is going to tell us right at the top here, about its experience points, its one creature, etc. It's going to give us all of their details, everything we need to import. Um, and just here, I'll try and make this a little bit bigger for you. That's quite big. Just here, it's the fact that they're a challenge rating of four. Um, what's really good with this site is just next to that, there is this little box here, this little button that says scale creature by CR. Now it does say highly experimental, so you need to be a little bit careful and check your work but if I click on this I get a sliding bar I can slide that down to three and it will adjust certain things like hit points and stuff like that um, and make this a slightly easier encounter uh, I can also just click this to reset it or I can scale it up let's say I want level six one um, so it's going to potentially change its armor class if required certainly a lot more hit points um, and some of its skills. Now it is highly experimental. It is going to automatically update things like weapon attacks and damage and scale those for you. Um, but it may well not scale things like spells and stuff. So be aware of it um, and you might need to check it. But it, still, we've scaled this and now if I just zoom out to make it bit fit on screen better, I can then copy this and use that 5e stat block importer to bring in the scaled challenge six uh, version of this Grail Psychic. That's really, really handy. So if you watched my last video where I was talking about Figma um, and planning out the whole of the adventure and then integrating other adventures into it so they can run all over the place, what you might find is that your characters level a bit quicker than expected. So by the time they get to, for example, Wave, uh, Wave Echo Cave, they're actually one, two, or maybe even three levels higher than the module was originally written for. Um, and that's going to be a bit of an anticlimax, isn't it? You're just going to walk in and just smash everything to bits. Um, well, if you can see the adventures going that way, you can just come in and scale all those monsters up. So regardless of which path they follow, how long it takes them to get to certain points, you can just scale those encounters using this, the, the um, 5e tools beastery, 
uh, to scale those monsters up, to make them tougher, to make them more of a challenge for those players, and then just dump them in, in as alternative versions. Um, and we've seen how we do that. We've seen how we use 5e stat block importer to bring in the new monster. Uh, we've seen how we create new monsters in previous videos. What a nice combination of solutions. Really, really nice. It gives that player all of that freedom to move around, to do what they want in the order that they want to, but still find the bits that are supposed to be challenging. Challenging. Lovely. Um, let me know if you're planning to use this. Uh, are you planning to use it in a similar kind of way? Or, you know, you might have a, a campaign that is based on a particular type of monster. Like, uh, I don't know, it's all goblins. Goblins is your key thing. And actually some of those goblins you want to scale up to make them tougher. You might have a particular band of goblins that's tougher than your average goblin. Um, yeah, lots of different ways you can use it. Uh, I hope this one's useful. So just a reminder, yeah, 5e tools, beastery. Um, that goes very, very nicely with the 5e stat block importer, which is a module for Foundry. But this, this isn't a module. This isn't a Foundry module. You can use this just on its own. You don't need it as part of a VTT or anything. Really good. See ya.